Over the last year, I've been designing, building, and testing this autonomous, long-range depth mapping boat. It started as a way to look for fish, but has slowly become something that can explore its environments in harsh conditions, all by itself. I'm using two 45 amp motors as propulsion with long range drone propellers, powered by a 6.5 amp 4S battery and controlled by ArduPilot using a Matic flight controller. We're utilizing camera mounts above and below to record its surroundings with a depth map sonar sensor on the back. In the last video of the series, we sent the boat out on Bala Lake in North Wales to trial its first autonomous waypoint missions. We aimed to prove whether we could trust it and decided we couldn't without some major upgrades to our range and telemetry. Today, you're joining me on the latest stages of our journey, where we resolve these problems and take the boat to a new lake. For the new transmitter and receiver, I decided to use Matic's MLRS 900MHz system, which was perfect for our Ardu Pilot boat. We get long range and full Mavlink back to the controller. This is where an internal Bluetooth module bridges the connection between the controller and ground control on our phone, allowing full telemetry over long distances. We then moved on to the design that would include all this new equipment. We began the build by putting brass inserts into the new lid that would be on the top of the boat. This would have both the GPS module and the antenna on top. Right, we are done putting in the nut inserts. All we have to do now is just clean up the surfaces because these need to seal really well. Now we have cleaned up the top surface, we can do the easy part and add the camera bracket back on the front. So the next upgrade for the boat is the GPS module at the front. Now this one's more of an aesthetic, but it has some upgrades within it. So this was the GPS module that we were using before. This is the upgraded one that I've now designed. And I guess we'll see how it works. At this point, we add black tack, which we'll use quite regularly. It's the same thing that companies like JBL use for waterproofing on their speakers. All we're gonna do is we are gonna mount this on. We can feed the cable through afterwards, so putting it on now isn't too much of an issue. But that seems... That seems good to me. We then repeat the process with the black tack before mounting the antenna too. Start screwing in the top plate. The mast consists of two main pieces. We've got the Matic MLRS receiver mounted in the center with the VAS antenna at the top. We'll seal the lid onto the box with cable ties. The connection then goes down through a serial cable to the flight controller. To mount this, we next need to add brass inserts for our hinge point at the base. So this is basically what we've got. Now we start with the antenna in this position and we can then pivot it. So what we've got to do now is just add some bolts to here. So what we've got here is the Matic receiver. We then feed a standard serial cable down the antenna, down the bottom into where the cable will go through. So all we've got to do is feed that through now. Now I've got to take the slack up in this part and for that to happen, we then have to put our antenna in. So this is gonna be an extremely fiddly bit where we're trying to get the antenna clipped on and also put everything in, in place. So we've got it. We've got our RX in like this and we've got our antenna on the end. I've just, all I'm gonna do is just mount it with a cable tie. Maybe put a bit of hot glue just into there to stop any water coming back down the antenna. We then just have our plate that mounts onto here 
and a couple cable ties just to hold it in place. We need to be able to get back into it in case we need to bind again or update firmware, think random things like this. So then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna chuck a cable tie around like this just to stop it hopefully breaking if it gets caught or disconnecting. We're now adding more black tack to the lid that goes on top of the receiver just to make sure that no water is going to get in. So the plate should just squeeze in like this. Put our GPS module into position. We've got our cable feeding through the bottom. We're just going to put a little bit of black stuff on both sides there. And then the finishing touch is our new lid for our GPS that can just sit like that. That is the new top of the boat. So we've just got to attach this and wire it into the boat. Nice, so we're all wired in. All I want to do now is just chuck some hot glue on the connections. Right. And now we just have to make sure that the cables find a place to sit comfortably. So that will just sit around like that. The lid then goes on. At this point, we're just going to hand tighten the screws. Well, we are still yet to do the controller because I need to assemble the box for the TX on the back of that. But we have assembled the boat and that is the important part. As you can see, it's, it's definitely looking the part now. The transmitter is designed to go in a JR box, which will fit on a standard size radio system. Now my radio is a Jumper T Pro, which is a much more compact, built for a micro bay. So what I've got to do is print my own enclosure for the TX. And for now, until we know that the system works, we're just going to stick it onto the back of the controller. With the transmitter complete, the build is finished. Behind me is Thing Kellen in North Wales, and we are going to be testing the boat here today. The moment we reached the shoreline, the focus wasn't on going fast or chasing distance. It was about proving the new upgrades to be trustworthy. Before I can let this thing disappear across the lake on fully autonomous modes, it needs to earn that trust. On paper, this new long range radio system should be bulletproof, way more robust than the previous setup but in real life we have new wiring, waterproofing and potential interferences. If something was to fail 200 meters out, there's no fishing line or way of getting it back and it could quickly turn into a thousand pounds of a submarine instead of a boat. So I started simple, slow throttle, gentle turns, checking every response, then gradually building confidence, pushing the throttle harder and watching for any shake in the mounts, listening for odd noises and trying to ensure that the control was doing exactly what I expected. Once the boat had proven itself, we shift focus to auto missions. One camera stays above the water and the other one sits below the surface. Up next isn't just movement across the lake, it's our first look under the water. We've set the boat off in auto with a camera in the front and a camera underneath. I'm going to see how far this time that the fish deeper can see until we lose range and then that's our next upgrade but um, I'll switch over to RD Pilot once we lose range. We immediately see an issue with the camera footage under the water. Now I'm not sure if this is settings or whether this is just the nature of the water that we're in but it's something that we're definitely going to have to look to improve. The boat has begun its first waypoint mission on this lake. 
and whilst it starts its voyage, we look at the fish deeper fish finder mounted on the back for the first time and watch as the bottom of the lake slowly deepens. Now the fish finder isn't rated to long range, so our next upgrade is going to be working out the best way to improve this. Whether this is a different type of fish finder, or just making our own type of antenna instead. At this point we've lost range to the fish finder after about 50 meters, so we switch over to Ardu Pilot where we can see where the boat is and how far it is on the mission. It's going somewhere. I love the fact that the range just is just what it is. So from here, we're just watching the boat as it carries on its path. We're keeping line of sight the entire time, partly for safety and partly because there's something weirdly satisfying about just seeing it get on with the mission. When we check on the battery through Ardu Pilot, we can see it's still about 16.2 volts, which has dropped from 16.8 so I don't think endurance is a concern. This setup could run for hours if it needed to, which is exactly what we'll be relying on when we start doing full lake underwater exploration runs. For now, we just let it keep cruising, confident that the system's just gonna do its thing. The boat successfully returned from its mission, slowly giving us more and more confidence that the core of this exploration tank was going to provide us with the confidence that we needed. We immediately sent it straight back out on another autonomous journey, again completing successfully. After the boat had finished its final mission of the day, we proceeded to take it out in manual, seeing how deep the water underneath was. The plan is to upgrade the range of the fish finder and start searching for fish deep in the water. Where we were was actually quite a shallow part of the lake, but now we can trust the range and the boat, we can start sending it into the center, where depths can reach up to 40 meters. If you've gotten this far with the video, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. And if you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to subscribe and comment what you want to see in upcoming videos.